When we built our timing executable, we also created a map file that contains information from the linker on where it put all of our program code into memory. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so it's kind of a complicated file, but I'll help you navigate it. I'm gonna search for the phrase memory usage, and here I find it. And this is a memory usage report, uh, and in particular it starts out telling us where it put things in kseg0, which remember is cacheable uh, virtual memory. And so first it's gonna tell us about where it put our program statements. And it starts out with this section, this text section, which means it's code. And it placed it here at this address 9D001E00. This is, in fact, where our linker tells, or our, our linker script, nu32bootloaded.ld, our linker script tells the linker where to start putting uh, the program statements. And so from there, addresses get bigger, they go up. So the first section of code is put there. And if you notice, this is the size of each of the section, both in hexadecimal here as well as in decimal, the number of bytes. And these sections are contiguous, and you can see that easily, say, if you look at, um, uh, let's see, a simple one of these, maybe int enable system multi-vector here. So this section starts at 2B04, it's 34 long, and you can see the next section starts then at 2B38, which is 38 in hexadecimal uh, further uh, up the memory map from the, the previous program code. Okay, so we can see that all these are tightly packed program code sections. Now let's take a look at that largest one. This first one here, it, it takes up uh, over 2,000 bytes and it's placed at this memory address, 9D001E00. So let's look for that memory address. And we find it here. And what we see then is our object code for the NU32 library is placed here. NU32 startup, read UART, write UART. So the code for that library is placed here in memory. Now if we go back again, and we can see this third text section starts at 278C, so let's look for that. And here we find it, and this is the code that we wrote. This is our timing.c converted to object code timing.o. We have the main function, the delay function, and the toggle light function, and you can see their addresses in hex, in uh, cacheable, uh, cacheable virtual addresses. Uh, another thing we can do is look at what else was placed in memory besides our code. So let's go down here. It's a complicated file. We won't look at all of it. Look at this one, kseg1 data memory usage. And it says here we've got 32 bytes of global data that we have created and stored uh, in this program. And in fact, if we were to look for that, so you can see it's at the very first address in data RAM, 0xA and seven zeros. And it's also not cacheable, which again, for data in RAM, we don't really care because we can get data from RAM very quickly. We don't need to use the prefetch cache. So it's stored in non-cacheable memory at the very first address for RAM. So if we look for that address, and there's some other things here that we won't think about. I'll get down to our actual, here we go. So here I can see at this address, we've got something defined in NU32.0, and in fact it's this buffer, it's a 32 byte long char string uh, called NU32RS232 out buffer. So if you went and looked at the NU32.C code, you would see this global variable there, 
And because it's global, that's why the linker allocates space for it. So let's just look at the rest of the memory map. And particularly down here, uh, the, less, the, rest of, um, the rest of the data memory, what is it doing with it? So we know that we have 128 kilobytes of data memory. We're going to use 32 of those bytes to store that, uh, that string in NU32.C. Then we've got this section called the heap and another section called the stack. Now the heap is memory that you reserve or set aside for dynamic memory allocation. So you can define, for example, an array to be a static size. So the array is always 100, and you type the number 100 into your program. Or you can create variable-sized arrays, for example, while the program is running in response to the user's input. If you want to do that, that's called dynamic memory allocation. And to allow that, you have to tell the linker to leave some space aside so that you can assign it later dynamically as you create arrays uh, during the, the program execution. And that's called the heap. That's what the heap is for. And since we didn't tell the linker to reserve any space for us for dynamic memory allocation, the length of that section is zero. That means all the rest of our RAM is available for the stack. Now what the stack is, is it uh, stores local variables so that when you enter a function and you create an array in that function or you create some variables that only live inside that function, those variables are assigned places on the stack. And then when that function exits, then the stack pointer, which is telling you where the variables are in your current function, basically pops back up and throws away the rest of those variables that you already had, that you had stored in the stack for that particular function. So the stack is used for storing local variables, and the heap is used for storing dynamically allocated variables, and uh, the only other data that we have in this program is this uh, string that was defined in NU32.C.